On this episode of Setter Tales, we go off the beaten path and learn a few of the secrets that go into manufacturing custom gun stocks with Paul and Cheryl Hilmer. I'm Wade Kisner and I grew up hunting upland birds. Nothing's better than chasing a couple English setters called Sweet Lou and Adeline. Lou is a master hunter and Adeline is quickly learning the trade. These are some of our tales. Sweet Point Setter Tales is brought to you with support from our sponsors. As someone who's hunted birds all his life, I knew that the proper fit of a shotgun was important. Until I met Paul Hilmer at the Aiming for a Cure celebrity hunt last year, I really hadn't given as much thought to it. I didn't understand uh, all that it took to actually properly fit a gun. Paul and his wife Cheryl operate a business that specializes in top quality precision made custom gun stocks. Through the years, Paul has mastered every part of the process. Today he's giving us a rare opportunity to see what all goes into creating a unique and important piece of this hunter's tool. Well, hey. hi there. Hi, Welcome. Paul. How you hi, doing? It's good doing to see well. you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. It I has. found you up here. Welcome, Welcome to our shop. Yeah, Welcome this is beautiful. Did you, what did you bring? Did you bring that Benelli along? You know, I did. Um, we, you remember we talked about it, and uh, you said you might be the only guy that could help me shoot better with it, so, well, um, uh, so I brought it along. We'll see what we can do. Uh, you know, the, you come to the doctor here, so... Uh, <laughs> and this must be Cheryl. <laughs> this is Cheryl, my hi, wife. Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. She's the one that runs the operation. Yeah. Now. Okay, let's check that chamber. Very good. This is where we start. Um, I, um, I'm just going to uh, observe how you mount your gun, and I'm going to have you stand at this line, and this is where everybody starts. And the, the reason you're going to be pointing that direction is I have a mirror on the wall, and you're going to be aiming at your own right eye. You're a right-eyed shooter, and so that's the point of aim. If a gun doesn't come up to your shoulder properly and fit you, it's going to shoot in the wrong place. I haven't measured this yet, okay. but just observing, um, the length of pull is not bad for you. But as we talked about off the shelf, that could be I just got lucky with the gun that fits my length of pull versus and the industry, my son's or somebody and else. And the industry, just like jeans, now we don't have quite as many sizes as jeans, but they know what average is. Yeah. And so for, for people that are either very small or very, very large, those are the people that are the um, outliers maybe that don't fit the average. So we got a dog on point, we're walking in and the bird gets up. What I'm looking for here is that um, most shotgunners would like to see that first joint making contact with the trigger. And I would say in your case, um, I don't know whether it's lucky or what, but it's okay. about ideal, ideal. Okay. If you had a smaller hand and you couldn't reach it, then we would, make the, we would bring this grip a little bit closer so a person with a smaller hand could reach the trigger better. I'm a little bit uh, curious about how you got involved in building custom uh, shotgun uh, stocks for different customers. And as I understand it, it goes back 45 years. That's right. 1972, I moved here from Colorado and uh, went to work for a guy by the name of R.J. Antone. He, he was a military range officer and um, he was really, really good at fitting people. And that's where I learned a lot of these little techniques about um, how to get the best out of a gun stock for, for competitive shooters. Then as he grew older and um, I also had um, experience with mechanical uh, engineering and uh, industrial arts programs, so those things um, all fit together. Cheryl was a graduate from UNI um, and was a teacher. She taught for 10 years um, before um, we got to the point where after teaching, she would come home and try to catch up with the bookwork and help me. And um, 
it got to be too much. So it was a big step of faith on her part. We do a great job, um, and I think that uh, when it comes to fitting someone and, and then turning that into not only just a, a utilitarian tool, but also a work of art, um, I enjoy doing that. We measure, we measure here and we measure here. And as you can see, um, this is a bigger dimension here than, is, than here. That's very typical of a, of, a, of a field stock. I'll just put my ruler, I come up to a one inch mark there and I can see that this measures one and nine sixteenths at the point of the comb. And it slopes downward to about two and a quarter at the heel. If you were much bigger in the chest than you are, then what we can do is we change, pitch is measured this way. You can do this at home by, by putting the butt on the floor and touching this on the wall, and then we measure how much pitch it is here at the muzzle. You could also put this exactly on the floor and let, let this gun just bump the wall right here and see how far the muzzle is away from the wall as it came straight down here. And so as a person needs um, a quicker handling uh, gun, or if you're bigger in the chest, we would increase that pitch angle so this muzzle would come further away. And what that's doing is then it would have to be recut. The object on all of this is so that that recoil pad contacts your shoulder uh, with even pressure. One of the most easily identifiable problems when a stock is too long. If that stock is too long for them and they start swinging across their body, across their body, either to the right or the two left, they will pull their head off the stock and it will cause a miss. That's a very common thing. A stock is a link between your anatomy and the gun. Maybe we ought to um, take this gun uh, out and put it on the pattern board. I mean, we're going to shoot it and, uh, and see what the targets tell us. And this is basic, um, a basic field stock, and I think we should just take it out and, and put it on the pattern board and let the target tell us how this is working out. How long have you been in this building right here? This is 14, 14 years. This was kind of an old building that had welding equipment in it. We cleaned it up and uh, put new heating and air conditioning and um, lights in it, and so it's a workshop for us now. Well, we um, purchased the business from the Antones about 1982 or 83, and Mrs. Antone did the finishing. And so she taught me what she knew. And then, of course, through the years, there's different finishes that we've learned about. Um, when we have customers come, a lot of times they're here for the day. So, you know, I spend a lot of time just visiting with them while Paul's busy doing the woodworking. And that's probably my favorite part of our job because we have had people from all over the country, uh, even some other countries. I would like you to take a six o'clock hold. Handgun shooters know what we're talking about here, but let that entire black bullseye just Set float. right on top of the bead. That's right, Put keep the chamber empty that way. Uh, and so just step up and I'm gonna call fire in the hole when you're ready. Yep. Okay. That was shot number one. Okay, that's two. Okay, let's uh, clear the chamber and we'll take a walk up there and see what we got. This is our aim point here at six o'clock, six o'clock hold. And um, I'm gonna call this without measuring it and counting pellets. I mean, if you wanna really get anal, you could do that. But um, this is probably 70% high. If you were on a ridge and that bird was down below, you might have to hold a little bit underneath that bird to get a good break or, or a good uh, um, a, a, a kill shot. So um, six o'clock hold, left and right, couldn't ask for anything better. These are the things that we look for. Right. Um, sometimes, I mean, I've seen this massive pattern up here, or I've seen this massive pattern way over here, or sometimes people come in and they're really low. So, I mean, the stock is really the uh, steering wheel, so to speak, um, for proper shotgun shooting. Well, Wade, um, after patterning your gun and taking a look at it, actually, I think yours is uh, fitting you and suiting you pretty well, so you don't have any major issues. But if somebody else was here and we were going to go through what's the next thing that would happen in making a stock for them, uh, we, would, we would step over to here and, and look at a wood selection. This is a piece of American um, uh, black walnut. It, it shows, it exhibits a lot of different uh, colors. What we're looking for 
is, is a piece of wood which will allow me to take all those dimensions that I determine the, the shooter needs. Physically it has to be large enough, but then in addition to that we'll put a template on there and look for good straight grain through the grip. There are a lot, a lot of woodworking steps that have happened, but we went to the bandsaw, we went to um, a pantograph machine, we went to a lot of hand shaping. Um, at this stage um, the finish is being applied um, this happens to be a, a piece of um, bastone wood. Bastone is from California, uh, grown, and it's a very dense wood. It's, but it is a, uh, it's a, a crossbred walnut. It doesn't produce a nut, and it's sterile. But a cu customer brought me this piece of wood, said, would you make me a gun stock? He's a skeet shooter out of this, and it turned out to be a great piece of wood. So at this point, we put it back on the gun, and it goes into it. Then I'll do the checkering and carving. Checkering. Checkering is, um, as I said earlier, uh, kind of a non-skid surface that's applied to the gripping areas, both in the grip and maybe on the forend of stocks. Um, functionally, it's very important. This would be just an example of um, taking some of the checkering tools that I've got. This is a, um, a little file, but it's got this is a 75 degree cutter. This is a piece of carbide and all those little teeth that are on there are actually ground into there and this stays sharp for quite some time. That would be my starting master line. So now I can run this guide in the, in the original groove. That second line now is parallel to the first one. Then if I want to go to the third one, now this is a three line spacer, same, same lines per inch. Now you see I'm, I'm, I'm establishing parallel lines, that's three of them. We would keep working these back with the single line cutters until these lines with flat, flat ridges on the top become points. Checkering in, in, in itself uh, will take, in some cases, just as long to do or maybe longer than making the entire gun stock because it can get very complicated. So it's functional and it's artistic all at the same time. So what's the, what's the future hold then? Uh, are you going to keep, uh, well, keep making gun stocks for a while? I think we're going to start slowing down a little bit. What I'm really looking forward to, I said, one of my jobs has always been to uh, make sure everybody else had their equipment, their guns ready to go, and that they had a good time. Now I'm going to say, well, um, I'm going to maybe be on the phone with you and say, uh, can I stand behind you and your dogs and, and maybe, Anytime. maybe do a hunt. Anytime. As I headed home that night, I thought about how Paul and Cheryl's work represents a culture that's being lost. Nowadays, we have assembly lines with automatic systems that can easily manufacture synthetic stocks. His work represents craftsmanship and dedication that you don't often see in our rushed, hurried world that we now live in. But one thing's for sure, my appreciation for a well-fitting gun will never be the same. Hi, I'm Wade Kisner with Sweet Point Setter Tales. Do you have an interesting story idea for a future episode? We'd love to hear about it. Drop us a line at sweetpointsetters.com.